Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorella Show. I'm Jack Benedict. We're going to talk Crimson Hawks football here for you today as they came away with a 50-23 to win over Seton Hill last Saturday, 8-1 and on the year now. Coach, you didn't waste any time, huh? Third play, bang, 75 yards. Quinton hits uh, McNeil, and he makes a great move, and I was just hoping we was going to stay in bounds. Right. But he did, and you were up quickly, 7 nothing. Yeah, it was the first third down of the game, and uh, we had put that play in, uh, particularly for this game, for the coverage we thought we were going to get. It matched up with what we thought we were going to get. Uh, they actually brought the extra guy instead of – putting them in coverage, and uh, Malik Anderson did a great job picking up the blitz. We had a lot of time protection and threw the drive route to uh, Dom, and once he got turned up into the sideline, JoJo actually blocked two guys, uh, blocked the one and just got in the way of the other one, and then Dom outran the, uh, the other defender. It looked like he might have an angle on him on the sideline, and it was one of the deals where he was either going to get him after a 20-yard gain or it was going to go all the way, and you know, luckily it went all the mm -hmm. way. You know, maybe overlooked, but JoJo's a pretty good uh, blocker, isn't he? Well, he's so big. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he just on his size alone, he can get in the way. And, you know, and some of those smaller DBs can't even see around him. And uh, once he gets on you, you know, he's 6'3 and 220 pounds. And, you know, he's as big as some tight ends, actually. But he's sure. probably, yeah, he, he's a really good blocker. Yeah. You, um, you know, 538 yards. 50 points on the board. I know we talked with you on the post game. Uh, so uh, were you totally satisfied, though? Well, I, I think offensively, we had uh, a couple series in the first half where we were really sloppy, put the ball on the ground. Uh, then we kind of got it going. We got our run game going. We, we came out in the second half, got a three and out, and ran three runs and went the distance for a touchdown. So we're kind of up 30 to three, and we kind of got a little too comfortable there. We had two series offensively in the second half. The one was just a one play, and we threw an interception, which we can't do. Uh, so it was a one play series. We had stopped them. They missed a field goal. And then the other series is after a sudden change. We recovered a fumble. We had first and 10 on the plus 38, and we went three and odd. And we, we can't do that in sudden change. So other than uh, those two series in the second half, I thought we did a really good job, our, our second team. Uh, did a good job on the last drive of the game. You know, they were calling timeout and blitzing and trying to get the ball back. So, uh, you know, we're running our offense just like we normally do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hit the long pass to Carter down the middle who made a great catch and it was a great throw by Jalen. So we finished it well offensively. Defensively, we were really sloppy in the fourth quarter. We gave up two touchdown drives. And we're not in the, you know, well, it's okay because we had our second team in there. We don't operate like that. Uh, we, you know, we set a standard and we expect our second group to go in there and play just like the first group does. So uh, we'll address that and uh, hopefully finish the game a little better on defense yeah. next time. You brought it up about uh, Jalen. Jalen Reese, uh, it was a fourth down play, 26 right. yard. I don't know how Carter hung on to the ball because not one, it's like he hit a brick wall, but there he had it and there we go, six points. Well, Carter hung on to the ball because he wants it pretty bad. That's, he's, he's a warrior. He's, he's as tough as they come. He loves being here. He loves playing. That takes nothing for granted. And, and I, it, I didn't doubt at all that he would hold on to it because there's nobody out there that wants it more than he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's a pretty good explanation, right. that's for sure. You had mentioned to us at halftime before the second half you wanted to run the ball, and you did. Right. Boy, Justice Evans had, uh, I mean, when you average 16 yards to carry, uh, two long runs, 175 yards overall. He is a pleasure to watch because you just, I mean, he's so, so exciting. Well, and he's not even, that was, uh, I believe he had 11 carries Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's had a game where he's had more than 12 carries. So uh, we're going to need him here down the stretch, I'm sure, to, to carry it more than 12 times in a game. And he's more than ready to. He's fresh. He's healthy. You know, last year at this time, he was banged up and he was our starter. And he was getting the ball 20, 25 times a game. Now he's fresh, uh, and it, it may be even exciting to see him if he gets his hands on it 20 times in a run game, what he can do. Because uh, he, he not only gets you the tough yards, he, the type of running back he is, is he can get you the tough yards, but he can also hit the home run too. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to find in a running back to be able to get you the tough yards, turn a three-yard gain into a seven-yard gain, 
but also be able to hit the home run like he did twice on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Would you like to get Samir more carries to him? Him also. I mean, he's uh, that type of back that he can Absolutely, give and he had a big run. He had a 35-yard run there in the uh, beginning of the fourth quarter uh, that he broke. So uh, both of them, you know, have not carried the ball more than 12 times in any game. So we feel like if we have to run it 35, 40 times, they're both – more than ready to carry it 20 times each. And then we have Malik Anderson, who's our third back, who's uh, our third down back. But, uh, you know, we're taking what the defense gives us. If they start, uh, especially on first and 10, if they're giving us a light box, we're going to run it. And uh, we feel like we've got, the, you know, obviously the, the Samir and uh, Justice are guys that can give us what we need in the run game, you know, not only making first downs with ball, you know, possessing the ball and, keeping our defense off the field. But, you know, our mm. problem right now is <laughs> we're on the field a lot on defense because we score so fast on offense. You know, three-play drive, two-play drive, four-play drive. Uh, the first drive was three plays, mm -hmm. you know, 70-yard, 70 75-yard touchdown pass. Uh, we had a three-play drive in the second half that went for a touchdown. We had a four-play drive in the second half that went for a touchdown. So we're scoring so fast on offense, our defense is on the field a lot. Now, that's a good problem to have, mm -hmm. but uh, we're playing a lot more. Play like, we played 83 snaps on Saturday. Part of it was because our offense scoring fast, but also because in the second half we didn't do a very good job getting off the field on third and fourth down. Uh, and that was the cause of the two touchdowns, really, in the, in the fourth quarter in the red zone. We didn't play very good, and we didn't mm -hmm. had opportunities on both drives to get off the field on third and fourth down, and we didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, your defense, uh, you know, you only gave up 13 yards rushing total. Right. Tillman was just unbelievable. He did a little bit of everything, didn't he? I mean, he's, the safety recovers. He's got sacks. And, uh, you know, he's got people blocking him everywhere. He had a super game. Yeah, he played well. He, he had, you know, the so-called splash plays that they talk about. Uh, ran a nice stun on the run coming out of the end zone for the safety. Did a, did a great job on it. Uh, two sacks. Uh, another tackle for a loss. Uh, he, he had a lot of hits on a quarterback just as he was throwing the ball. Uh, and, you know, he's still not 100% healthy. He's still banged up a little bit uh, with a shoulder and actually a thigh bruise. But, uh, you know, he's playing. And, uh, you know, right there, I believe, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, we, we got him out of there. But uh, he's still not 100% healthy. And, you know, hopefully we can get to where he, he can get close to being 100%. We can even get more out of him. Now, you didn't have Jackson Heasley. Right. Will he be available, you we think? We believe so. He had a concussion last week, uh, so he didn't make the trip. I would think that he'll get checked here tomorrow, and hopefully we'll, we'll have him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be you know be right. Special teams talk about that. There were some problems. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had you know the muff punt where the ball hit, bounced back, hit our guy. You know, it's interesting. We were watching Edinburgh film this morning, and the same thing happened to them against Clarion. They punted into the wind. It was a 20-yard punt. It hit the ground, bounced back, and hit their guy. So we got to be way more. Uh, safety cautious when they're punting into the wind, number one. Number two, Dwayne didn't give a fair catch, but he was making a hand gesture. I, I really don't know what he was doing, to be honest with you. We got a five-yard penalty for that. He was trying to make him think he was making a fair catch, even though it wasn't, but you can't do that. That's a penalty. Uh, he's always on the fence and always on the, the edge of, of something. So uh, that was one. And then we, we had the one punt blocked. You know, we started moving uh, uh, the punter. I, I'm losing track here. Oh, Grubbs. Grubbs. We started moving him on, on rugby, and he had done a great job in practice during the week, but then when we got in the game, he kind of wasn't taking the right steps, and we almost had one block that ended up being a 10-yard punt, and then we did have the, the, the one block the, the second time. So uh, a lot, lot of things we got to clean up in the kicking game. Yeah. Extra point. Extra uh, point blocked. And then we gave up a return of about 37 yards uh, on one of our kickoffs. So uh, th th we, we, we better shore that up or we're going to be in trouble. All right. Edinburgh's coming up. Edinburgh, they only have three wins. Okay. But they've won two in a row. Gave Slippery Rock a battle. New personnel for them, too. Uh, this is a lot of young guys that they're right. incorporating now, aren't they? Yeah. You know, the, the coach speak is going to say, well, they're a really good three-win team, and, and here's the reason why. They lost to Cal, Grand Valley, and Slippery Rock. 
So they, they lost the three top 20 teams in our mind. Right. Okay. So, you know, if you take those three teams out of it, okay, they're sitting at three and three instead of three and six. Grand Valley beat them by 17. Slippery Rock, they were beating Slipper Rock late in the third quarter. Uh, Cal was a 14-7 game into the fourth quarter. So they've played everybody close. They've won their last two pretty decisively. Uh, and they, you know, they had a win at Gannon where they kicked the field goal on the last play of the game to beat them. But, I, you know, right now, other than us and Slippery Rock, they're probably playing better than anybody in our, in our conference uh, here the last three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a, a player in Tanaz Gregory, wide receiver, not a big guy. I mean, he's breaking all kind of records up there. You've got to be aware of him everywhere he's on the field, right? Well, on offense as a receiver, you obviously got to be worried about he. They hit two uh, deep balls with him for touchdowns last week against Clarion. They throw a lot of screens to him. He's also their jet sweep and reverse guy. So they get the ball to him a lot of different ways offensively. And then you got to worry about him as a punt returner and kick returner. He's, he's, he's a great returner. He has been a great returner. Uh, this is his fourth year, and he's probably been as productive as anybody in the league in the last 20 years in regards to the return game and also playing receiver, running, running reverses, jet sweeps, screens. They do a good job of getting them the ball, and he, he's – He's a great player. We, we have to know where he's at all, at all times. Yeah, he sounds like you're Dwayne Brown, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he, he's got a little bit of he, – he's a little bit like Dwayne and Dom McNeil, uh, you know, because he's, he's built like Dom. Uh, he does he's, – he's really good, obviously, with the ball in his hands. You not only got to worry about him catching a ball, but you got to worry about his yardage after the catch. You know, he can catch a six-yard hitch and take it 60 yards like Dwayne has been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, or like Dom did Saturday, he's no different that he could catch a drive route at five yards and go 70 yards for a touchdown. So you got to worry about his yardage after the catch. You got to worry about him catching the deep ball. You got to worry about him on screens. You got to worry about him on reverses. And then you got to worry about when you punt and kick it to him. So uh, it, when you look at production from one guy, uh, he's as productive as anybody in the league. Yeah. Now you've got to replace uh, Jeff Arnold. Right. Uh, came up with a knee, you know, and uh, I guess he's going to be out for a while. So uh, I understand you're going to switch McAllister to center right. now, his original position. Right. McAllister was a high school center, played here at center early in his career. Uh, he's finally healthy. Good. <laughs> so, you know, you hate to say it, but it's like a trade. Now Jeff's hurt, but, but Colin's healthy. So Colin will move into center. We still have John Robinson at guard and Dauber at guard. They're playing high level, both, both those guys at guard. So uh, we're fortunate that Jeff is that uh, Colin is healthy now yeah. uh, to plug in for Jeff. What Jeff really gives us as much as anything is very smart, really good snapping the ball because you you know we're in the shotgun most of the time. Really good at making the calls, very efficient, a uh, lot of experience. So we're going to lose a lot of those things. And and, and now with Colin, we're going to get the experience, but he hasn't played a whole lot of center since he's been here. So that part of it's going to be a little bit different. But, you know, he's a good offensive lineman and a good player. We're basically playing with three guards, and he has to snap the ball. Yeah, okay. All right, it's senior day, and I know coaches always look back on the seniors that right. they've had, and they call them special. Right. Why is this group of seniors, how are they special? Well, I think the thing you got to realize is uh, we have 20 of them, and I believe – Close to 14 of them have been here at least three years. We've got four guys that have been here five years and seven guys that have been here four years uh, with some transfers sprinkled in there. Uh, they've been a great class in regards to character, uh, great for the program, positive influence in the community. Uh, and then, you know, they've won 39 games in four years and they're not done yet. So, uh, you know, I, I would really – be happy if we could get a big crowd out this Saturday to uh, honor what they've done for the program and for the university. Uh, they, they've, they've been great ambassadors for the university and the community. Most of those guys are heavily involved in community service. And uh, they, they've, they've just shown great character throughout their time sure. here. And they've, they're 39 and 7 right now. Well, that speaks for itself. And, you know, this is the last regular season right. home game. We're not right. looking down too short, sure. but still. It's a time to honor them and to come out and 
hey, listen, we're in the home stretch here, folks. Right. <laughs> if you love football, this is what right. you want to see. Well, you know, the thing that you worry about is when you have a senior day late in the year, if you're, you're not in the playoff chase, it becomes counterproductive because it's kind of a sad type thing. You know, guys are very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what caught up with us last year against Shippensburg. Uh, not taking anything away from Shippensburg. They played a great game and they whipped us. Yeah. But I think, you know, the emotion kind of got to, to our guys because they probably weren't going to get in the playoffs. Well, now this is like a playoff game. We, sure. we have to win, obviously. So I don't worry about it. Uh, to that point, and there's some people that actually do their senior day early in the year as like a celebration of their senior year, so you don't have to worry about that emotion at the end of the year in a game, and if it's not a, a, a big game or you're not still in the playoff mm -hmm. chase, it might be a detriment. So we don't have to worry about that because this is just like a playoff game for us, and uh, I, I think they'll, they'll be ready, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll have another playoff game down, uh, another home game down the road if we, we can win our last yeah. two. Let's hope so. Hey, Tort, good luck. Appreciate right. it, Zach. Yeah. Thanks. We're, all right. Uh, we're coming up on uh, Saturday at noontime for the kickoff, and uh, we'll have complete coverage for you, of course, uh, down through the week and ready for game day. And we hope you'll uh, come along and, and catch IUP in Edinburgh. Coach Tort, Jack Benedict here. Have a nice evening.